This is your other brother's podcast. Sorta. Welcome, friends, to sort of your other brother's podcast, navigating faith, homosexuality, masculinity, and coronavirus together. I'm your host, Tom, and thanks to y'all for coming back for another episode of whatever this is. I was telling Nate the other day, it's going to be something like the the Quarren cast or the Corona cast or <laughs> the Convo cast or something. I don't know. It's the the Coke Zero of Your Other Brother's podcast. And I'm really excited today because today we have somebody who hasn't been here in a while. It's been far too long. And it's our dear brother, Marshall. What's up, Marshall? Hey, good to be here. Marshall, I'm starting the 20-minute timer. We are officially underway on this second episode of the Quarren Corona Convo cast. What are you doing uh, up in uh, in your neck of the woods? It's been far too long. Tell us, give us a quick update on what you've been up to. Okay. For those who know me, um, a lot of this is not news, but I think there are going to be a few people listening that don't know me as well. What we're going to be doing is, uh, what we have done actually, is uh, a bunch of people that I've been friends with in some cases for almost 10 years, we actually moved into a farm together and uh, we have been uh, living together since so oh, last uh, June. And we ended up, um, you know, trying to actually start farming a little bit. That's not so much my job, but there are a few people here interested in that, but it's an opportunity for real Christian community. And that's why we did it. That's awesome. I'll be honest, I was expecting to see 17 people shuffling in and out behind you, but but maybe y'all are practicing good social distancing within your house. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm in a situation where that's pretty much impossible. Um, you know, people have walked in and out, um, but they just haven't been right behind me. Mm. Um, it's a long story, but if yeah, we, I, if we see any familiar faces, I'll be sure to, I'll be sure to wave to the, <laughs> to, to yes, the yes. Uh, <laughs> you might, you might you never know well, at the Marshall Yeah, Well, at least, <laughs> at least one familiar face that probably will walk by. But anyway, um, yeah, we've been, um, of course trying this and community is really important to me. It's something that I believe we should all, uh, have in one form or another. We all need, uh, friends, um, brothers, sisters in Christ that will uh, encourage us, especially at a time like this. Now, um, of course, <laughs> those of us that are actually living together, there, I think I said that there are 15 of us. And uh, for right now, we're all in one house. <laughs> yeah. So tell us how that works, because we are, yeah, in this culture, of, as of this recording, we're in this culture of social distancing and not like being too close to people but obviously y'all all live in the same house together. And so how have y'all had any conversations about how to like, how to make that work right now? Yeah. Most of us are not that worried. Um, what we've said is just sort of, you know, we'll um, be careful about things. We're not going to go to extremes, but you know, disinfecting things, whatever. Um, there has been a lot of, um, how would I say it? Uh, talk, just with our state in general and probably most states of, uh, you know, people keeping their distance, but in our house, it's, it's pretty much impossible to totally do that. Um, I was commenting to someone a few uh, weeks ago, or actually one week ago. Um, they were asking me how I was taking all this and I was describing how there's still a lot of things going on because of the number of people here. So I don't feel isolated in the sense that I'm still around a lot of people, but I was just commenting about a week ago that, uh, you know, well, I haven't been hugged in a while. <laughs> uh, and that was having an effect, but, uh, I'm now going on four and a half weeks since my last hug. <laughs> really? Really? Wow. <laughs> Something like that. Um, well, that was probably true of me until, um, I think it was Saturday, this past Saturday, which uh, that would be two days. Um, <laughs> I definitely uh, did have an experience that really helped me. I was, uh, there were about 10 of us gathered worshiping. Most of us go to the same church, which by the way, has not been meeting except on video. Um, and so anyway, some of us were meeting 
Um, most of the people there were people that actually live in the house. Um, there were probably about 10 of us. We were praying together and worshiping. And um, at one point, um, one of the guys who, you know, leads worship has, um, you know, was walking past me, you know, kind of at a break of the time there. And he just looked at me and, and he kind of uh, signaled, stand up. So I did. And he hugged me. And he really said that uh, he wanted to express that kind of love that he felt like I needed it. And I said, yes, <laughs> I appreciate that. So we talked and we had a very helpful, in-depth conversation. And um, he basically said he's not going to avoid hugging when someone's in need <laughs> like that uh, just because of the uh, virus situation. So I went, thanks. And he said, tell me anytime you need a hug, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, you haven't met this guy. His name is Steven, but good friends. That's Very nice. much appreciated. I don't know if you can see on my screen, Marshall, but I have a body pillow that I'm using as insulation oh. for my back door. And so it's like a five foot body pillow and I can hug that as much as I want. So that's <laughs> well, it's not the same the as we all know. That I'm getting <laughs> right now. Um, yeah. yeah, no, it's crazy times. I wanted to get your perspective, Marshall, because you're, mm. you're the oldest guy who, who blogs on our site and um, I guess he's been on our podcast. I can't think of any other guests, I guess, who might be older than you. But um, I don't know. What's your perspective of just like, what's the macro perspective, the macro Marshall perspective of what's going on in the world right now? Have you seen anything like this in your years? Or do you like, I don't know, where do you see this going? Or what uh, what do you see going on from your vantage point right now? Well, no, I haven't seen anything quite like this. I mean, the worst um, epidemic that I've seen really has just been some of the flu epidemics that were not on this scale. Nobody was, uh, you know, told to stay at home or anything like that. It was, mm -hmm. um, this reminds me of what my grandfather talked about with the uh, Spanish flu in 1918. Um, he definitely had some stories about that. And it, it sounds like the kind of quarantine situations that we're dealing with now were happening in some cities then, but it was much more, uh, localized on a city by city basis rather than the whole U S even then. And so, you know, this is a first for that. Um, you know, most other crises that we've had have either been like, you know, uh, some kind of war that was overseas and it didn't directly affect us here. It only affected people in the military or else, you know, there was, uh, September 11th, 2001, where obviously we had the attacks on the Pentagon and the, um, you know, the Empire, not the Empire State Building, excuse me, the uh, uh, World Trade Center in New York City. Um, but uh, we definitely um, got over that pretty fast. <laughs> and this is the kind of thing that's dragging on a little longer than that and having much more serious economic things. Um, yeah, I, I would say I've known more people that have lost their jobs faster than ever before, mm -hmm. including the 2008 downturn, which that was the worst since the Great Depression. And this is worse than that. I was not alive during the Great Depression, but uh, <laughs> my understanding was that took months before it really had an effect on the whole country, um, whereas this seems to not be taking months. So the economic problems are of a really serious scale, the worst I've seen probably. Um, so who knows what the long-term story is? Yeah. And you mentioned people losing their jobs. Cause I've, mm -hmm. you know, I've been leaning into my, my darkness, my foreness of just mm -hmm. like feeling angsty and right. unsettled and restless. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm learning a lot of gratitude during this time because I know, I know by and large, my preference is to work in coffee shops and to be out and about and to have opportunities to connect with people one-on-one. -on -one. And that's just where I thrive and that's where I do my best. But, but like literally with Yab, with our Patreon page, with being able to, to keep Yab going with blogging, with podcasts, like that can still be done anywhere. I haven't lost any job or momentum as far as that goes. Right. And I have to keep in mind that, yeah, people are, people are struggling. They've either been laid off entirely or their hours have been cut way back or, um, or yeah, they're just waiting on government checks to come in to literally make it to the next month. Like it's, it's scary stuff out there right now. And, um, yeah, for anyone, anyone who's struggling in that regard, definitely heart goes out to, to y'all. And, um, 
and just, it's been a lesson in perspective and gratitude. And I think, I think at the end of the day, that's going to be something that hopefully we all take away from this is the perspective and the gratitude that we've learned during this time, however long this time even lasts. Yeah. So one thing I've seen over the years is just God has taken care of me in all kinds of situations where there's a lot out of my control. I know um, you can certainly relate to moving across the country and Mm -hmm. dealing with all new friends and where am I going to work and all of that. I had to do that several times back um, about 12, 13 years ago. And um, I just saw God provide not just work and a place to live, but genuine friends. And God always took care of me, even though there was so much I couldn't do for myself. And um, I was really grateful to experience that because it it builds my faith for times like now. Like when I'm facing, you know, um, my name is on the mortgage. And although I haven't lost my job uh, half of the tenants here have lost their jobs. So oh, some wow. of the, some of the rent money may, yeah, who knows, it may not be as guaranteed as I thought it might've been. So, you know, right. things like that have an effect on you, but I can trust God for that. Partly because of what God did to take care of me, um, you know, years ago when I was, uh, in more serious need. So hmm. that's one good thing that some life experience has shown me. <laughs> God yeah. is faithful. He is. He is. When you were mentioning um, my traveling across the country, I just flashed back to the first time that you and I met at yes. a Panera Bread outside of Los Angeles, California. Yes. Like when was that? 2010, 2011? I feel like that was somewhere around almost there. a decade ago. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, roughly 2010. Right. I know that was in my first year of living out there. I knew that for sure. So it was either end of 2010 or somewhere beginning of 2011. That's, that's crazy. (laughs) I know. I had been reading your blog, of course, before that. I think I'd been communicating with you, you know, commenting on your blog online and then, you know, just communicating online. This was an anonymous blog for those that are wondering, like, where is this blog? No, it doesn't exist anymore. Right. If you missed that boat, you missed it. (laughs) Yep, it is definitely no longer available. I will say that blog got regurgitated into my first book, though, because I feel like that anonymous blog was this nice trial run to get my story out there. And then I kind of took all the blogs that I wrote and just uh, morphed them into what would become Struggle Central. So that was a fun experience. But yeah, meeting you, Marshall, you were like one of the first, I guess, people that I met through the blog. I went to a conference the previous summer, and so there was an opportunity to meet maybe five or six guys Mm at that thing, but not as far as a one-on-one setting. I mean, I'm trying to think of any other guys I might've met. It would have only other time I would have ever met anybody would have been in my drive across the country where I I met um, some of the, some of the guys on that site across the country as I stayed with them and, and relocated out to California. But, uh, but yeah, that was, that was a, that was a fresh, bold new frontier for me back, back in those days. Yeah, well, it it was <laughs> that was right about the end of my wanderings that time, and it's, it was the beginning of yours. Oh well. Yeah, how poetic! I was just starting to flee the nest, and you were starting to re resettle back in. <laughs> on <laughs> yeah, your side I of the country. Yeah, went back to Maryland. I, for those who don't know, I lived in San Diego for about two years, and I had lived in Seattle for a few months before that. And also in Florida with my father for a few months. And <laughs> Marshall, you know that it, I feel that it is my destiny to one day live in Seattle. You know this, right? You've said that several <laughs> times, but I just, I've seen you drive through there, but never seriously stick around for a while. So, I mean, I stuck around for a week when I was traveling the country. Uh, I don't know, five years, six years ago, I stayed okay. there for an entire week to really feel it out. Mm-hmm. And Honestly, I loved it. I think it was such an overload of like checking all the boxes of things that I love in a city, like right. coffee and the water and the forest and the mountains and the city scene. It's just like, it has everything I want. The only thing it doesn't have is that it's so far away from everything I know. Like all my connections, right. not all of my connections, but a vast majority of my connections are on the East coast and especially in the Southeast. And so it's, it's a, it's a world away. That's like the big, the big downside for me right now. But Right. I I love it out there. I can tell part of my Seattle story that you've heard a lot, but I think some of our listeners. (laughs) 
Tell me what happened when you drove down the road and you looked yes, up and saw course. What did you yes, see? I have to tell that. Yeah. Um, yes. When you're driving down uh, the main interstate through downtown Seattle, um, which I believe is Interstate 5, when I was going toward Tacoma, um, I always had a good view of Mount Rainier, which is, uh, you know, the largest mountain, a snow-capped mountain, year-round snow-capped. Uh, near Seattle. And I literally had to look away because I wanted to stare at it. And I was always afraid of getting into a crash. <laughs> you could have um, lost Marshall because of the grandeur and the yes. beauty of Seattle and Mount Rainier. Yeah. Big shout out to all of our, our Washington Washingtonians listening. <laughs> um, the other Washington, not the Washington that you're you're more familiar with now, Marshall. Right. I live, of course, in the suburbs. Well, the outer, outer suburbs of Washington, D.C., yeah, I feel uh, I feel like I'll get there eventually. It might take me another 30, 40 years, but I could see myself. That could be my final resting place right. <laughs> for all I know is uh, getting to Seattle. When you were there, did you ever get to see the Snoqualmie Pass uh, and Snoqualmie Falls and that whole, there's a ski resort so. there. You You did see it? No, I don't think so. Okay, that it's in the Cascades Mountains east of Seattle. That was really worth uh, driving through just the beauty of uh, going up, uh, you know, through the uh, forested mountains. It's hard to describe mm. forested. They're just big Douglas fir trees everywhere. It's nice. uh, just a different type of forest than you see on the East Coast. And it was just, you know, very beautiful to me. Um, of course, the driving was scary. I did, yeah, but I did spend a night at Mount Rainier National Park. Um, and spent a night camping out there. I had my tent with me. It was so surreal because this was July. It was like 70 degrees, but there's still snow on the ground. The snow hasn't melted. Um, and so I'm like hiking in a tank top because it's so hot out, but I'm like slushing in the snow as I'm trying to like find a dry patch to pitch my tent. Um, and then I caught the sunrise the next morning. There's a place called Sunrise Point where you like go down this road, this little jut, and you can see the peak so clearly and the sun just hits it and then reflects off of it. And it looks, I described it in my book as looking like something out of Zelda, like something out of some like mysterious planet world, this, this mountain peak that's just illuminated in the night sky. It was so, so pretty. Oh yeah. I've never been to that specific spot, but yeah, Mount Rainier, anywhere near there, it is beautiful. It's also a dormant volcano, but that's another story. That's another story. Yeah, we, we try not to think about those things. <laughs> Same thing at Yellowstone. People are just frolicking around everywhere. That thing could blow up at any moment. Yes. Nobody knows, but we're all just going to fraternize on top of it until that happens. Well, anyway, um, one other thing uh, that's been yes. happening around. We have around. two minutes, Marshall. So tell Here us. Here is, um, well, I guess uh, if that's all I have, um, I would probably be talking more about just the um, but anyway, the spiritual aspect of being alone for a long time, um, which I haven't been fully alone, but a lot more alone than before, um, you know, in the sense of distance to people. And actually, because of my job, number of hours talking to people per week is a lot less. Um, it really does, it can have a good effect in the sense you can spend more time with God or you can misuse that time. And, you know, be selfish and, uh, you know, I could think of all kinds of bad stuff to get involved in, not the least of which would be porn. And instead of that, what I'm saying is use the opportunity to turn, glorify God, worship God, pray, study scripture. That's what I've sought to do with my little extra time. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think it's done me some good. <laughs> hopefully uh, more good later. Yeah. I think if anyone ever had any excuses and I'm speaking to myself here, if anyone had any excuses previously about not having enough time <laughs> to uh, read the right. word or spend time in prayer or journal or what have you, right. um, I feel like it's safe to say now those excuses are thoroughly, thoroughly out the window. And it's really, this is again, an opportunity for us to practice presence and to practice. Yes. Um, yeah. Persistence in our, in our walks with the Lord, because right now I think it's, it's so tempting to just hit the off button and that could look like all sorts of things. It could look like porn. It could look like sleeping, oversleeping, overeating. It could look like indulging in all kinds of ways. Um, and I think this is an opportunity for all of us to, it's an opportunity to, to, to look at our faith and be like, okay, what is it? What is it made of? Do we, do we take 
advantage of these moments that we have where things are uncertain and we don't know what's going on. Like, are we going to, are we going to take advantage of those times that we have? Um, Cause it won't be like this forever. Eventually this will, this will bounce back. We don't know necessarily what the timeline is. That's the, the scary part, but, um, but things will, things will open up again. And, and what, what are, what are we doing now in this time where we have no excuses? Um, like maybe there's something that can be done now that'll carry over into the next phase of existence. I hope. There is a lot to look forward to. People shouldn't be so focused on the present that they don't think into the future. Of course, I tend to be a little more <laughs> intuitive rather than sensing. And so, of course, I tend to think more about the future and how things won't always be this way. Yeah. But it really does help you to get beyond the current difficulties to think about, you know, the positives for the future, the hope at least. For sure. For sure. Well, Marshall, that that's it. We're done. We, we caught, we thoroughly caught up after, <laughs> uh, yeah, missing out on, on lots of things going on. I know you've been busy, keeping busy in that, uh, environment up there and obviously yeah. the world's been busy lately. So it was good to have you back and we'll obviously have to have you back on a, on a regular episode of your other brothers podcast someday. Someday. Thanks. Soon. Thanks. But, I uh, appreciate those opportunities. Yeah. In the meantime, you stay safe out there. Practice that social distancing. <laughs> Make sure you're L bumping people. And don't, you know, I don't have <laughs> one thing you always would uh, joke with me about was bumping the microphone. Yes. Um, no, you didn't do that at all until just no, now. No, until right now. <laughs> yes. Um, so I, I at least avoided that by wearing the headset. So. Yeah, you were perfect <laughs> until that moment. So good job. <laughs> that was intentional, though. All right, brother. All right, brother. Thanks all for right. coming on. Stay safe out there. And everyone, everyone listening, y'all stay safe too. Make sure you wash your hands. Make sure you keep your distance. Um, make sure you also stay connected though. That's equally as important. Do not just fall off the earth. Make sure you are staying connected with your fellow man. And, um, and yeah, we'll get through this. We'll be back very soon for another episode of the Quarren Corona Convo Cast. Um, follow your other brothers on all the socials at your other bros. And uh, until next time. We'll, we'll see you later, y'all. Thanks.